Today's specimen of excitement and delight is this here. This is a nearly 110 year old tenor trombone made by CG Kong. And it is quite an interesting instrument in a number of ways, but before I get into any of them, I just want to say uh, up front that the slide is slightly bent. I want to fix it one day when I've got some funds available. So whilst the slide does move, it is quite noisy. Um, and to prevent further damage to it, I'm not really going to do too much in the way of playing. However, nonetheless, this is still going to be a video that I will at least find interesting. So let's go through some of the quirks of this instrument. First of all, we do not have any form of retention for the two halves of the instrument. Normally we would have some sort of lock here that would keep the two halves of the instrument together. We do not have anything of the sort. This connection is friction fit, uh, which means if you carry the trombone around on your arm like this, you are in grave risk of losing the slide. That's not particularly uncommon for instruments of this age. Now we've got the instrument apart, let's focus for a little bit on the bell section. Uh, unfortunately somebody seems to have modified this trombone, it looks like it had an additional brace across the top here. There is a, a, a sight where the finish is really quite poor on this side and then matching on the other side as well. So I can only assume that a brace used to go across there. It has a tuning slide like all instruments, like well not all, most instruments should have. And uh, interestingly, there is no serial number on the bell section. There are a few stamps. We've got, we've got a figure 92 written on the tuning slide section of the bell. And if we zoom in quite close, we will be able to see uh, some printed material here. Um, union label MPBPBNSW by the looks of things but it also says M and HP down the bottom of that I presume that is the equivalent of medium ball back then and HP stands for Harry Potter or high pitch one of the two the bell has got a really pleasing colour scheme as with many CG Con instruments of the day the inside of the bell has a gold wash which looks really effective. It's effectively a very thin layer of gold plate that's put uh, on the inside of the instrument. Quite a lot of instruments of this time did actually feature that. The engraving area on the bell here is a lovely two-tone sort of effect. We've got most of the engraving here is uh, just polished silver plate and then the rest of it is a sort of satin finish which serves to accentuate the engraving and the writing on it um, whilst looking quite pleasing on the hand. What it says on the front here is just simply made by uh, CG Con Elkart Ind. If we move on to the slide section, the slide section is interesting for a number of reasons. Firstly, we do have our standard slide lock that you will see on most instruments. Some very old trombones didn't have this, but thank thankfully this one does. And whilst the bell section had no serial numbers on it whatsoever, the slide section has three serial numbers on it, and they all match. We've got 142421 on the top here. We have the same thing on the bottom here, so these are the two parts of the slide, these, these remove. We also have a number one printed here and a number one printed there. And then the third serial number, for some bizarre reason, is on the back of the water key lever here. So all in all this is a uh, quite an interesting instrument I feel. I would think it would actually sound and play very nicely if the slide worked. Um, although it's one of those instruments that you do need to treat with a little bit of caution because of of course the fact that the two sections do not um, lock together. They have just got an interference fit. I shall play for you a couple of notes but again I don't really want to play too much due to the risk of potentially damaging the instrument. Thank <laughs> you. 